Hi everyone, so today I want to talk about this question that comes up in a certain point in our healing journey, which is who am I without the pain or who am I without the same amount of pain that I used to have? Because as we heal, as we process out that pain, that affliction that to some degree probably used to move us or be part of our identity, we have to reacquaint with ourselves and, and ask that question, who am I without the pain? And this is not to say that the pain no longer exists at all. This is a lifelong journey to purge out the hurt that we've accumulated in our beings across our lifetime. And so this is not something that there is some end, at least that's not what I believe, where we are healed, duh. But I think that there does come a point in our journey where there is this discernible point where we settle into ourselves and we notice and become aware that we do not house the same amount or the, sta the same heaviness or the same intensity of pain that we once did. And I think this is a, a very important juncture on that expedition of healing. So when I was younger, my driving force was the pain. That was what moved me to do a lot of the things that I did. Um, when I excelled at sports, that was from that pain. That was me trying to live with and adapt to having this mass of hurt that was sitting inside me just from a chaotic childhood and being a hypersensitive person, but really not being able to feel in the way that I needed to, to be a healthy functioning individual. And I think that for me, my pain often looked or expressed itself as anger, um, but always beneath that, that emotion of anger, I believe is pain. So this fire inside me was really my source of motion for many years. And I'm particularly talking about my early life from maybe like even four till like 16, 17. The fire within me was what made me excel at things. So I played a lot of sports during that time. And you know, I was, I was able to push myself further than most people because I had this energy inside of me that was intense this this the pain that was inside me was intense and again like i said most times it did manifest itself as anger but i could go out on to the ice or the field or whatever sport i was playing and that's the place where i would sort through that energy to get to this base level functioning so the level of pain that i was dealing with in those earlier years that allowed me to have this gear, this, this switch, this, yeah, like this fire, this fuel inside me that most people didn't have. And a lot of people just looked at it like, wow, you're really good at things. And, you know, I was good at things, but in hindsight, what was the driving force of that was the pain that I was trying to get away from or to, 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 to live with in a manageable way as this young individual who just grew up in this very unsafe environment and who as a result just had all of this toxic swirling energy and motion within me that had to make itself out in some way. So the pain was very, very deep. And yeah, that drove me, drove me to have that extra bit of horsepower. But I don't think this is particularly something we want to be driven, uh, especially in those early years by pain. But in a different regard, thank God for those outlets to go and sort through that energy because I think that I think I probably would have been even more of a delinquent or I would have ended up in juvie, you know, if I didn't have those sports, you know, almost every single night of the week, I had some sort of physical endeavoring. And I think that that really saved me because of the agony that ached inside of me, hurt people, hurt people. And I, and again, I'm not saying I was an inherently violent person or 
overly mean to people. Like I have a very soft, gentle soul beneath all of the armor. At one point I had to build around my heart, but yeah, that pain, if I didn't have somewhere to outlaw it, to get it out of me, which was sports, I, I don't know. I think that that really was, that was, a, that was a necessary remedy, was using those sports and activities to get me to a baseline functioning. So when you have a lot of pain, you have a lot of numbing, you have a lot of running from yourself, especially particularly being a hypersensitive person, just feeling everything so intensely, there was even more that I had to shut off. So when your sense faculties are heightened, you have more to numb, you have more to freeze. And you feel that pain just on a different level to those cavernous depths within, you have more to numb out. You know, I managed the pain as best as I could through what developed into a dependency on physical pursuits. Like I said, to be able to reach some level of equilibrium just so that I could live with, live in my flesh to the degree required to be a human. So, and of course at a certain point beyond having a dependency to exercise or like I've been calling it that, those physical pursuits, then I developed dependencies on other things like substances, drugs, alcohol, what have you, probably toxic relationships. I found other ways to get outside myself so I didn't have to sit with that pain. So then at some point, which for me pro is probably within the last seven years, so probably from around the time that I was 25, when these things that I used to mitigate the pain started to fall away, I started to shed them off. So I quit smoking, I quit smoking weed. I was sort of forced to tamper down, tame down my exercise because I had a really physical job in landscaping for a few summers. I slowly kind of realized the level of excess that I was enacting just to be able to manage that pain. Um, and I guess really my healing journey reached uh, a turning point when I decided to get sober, to quit drinking for good. And that's when I was really met with this upsurge of all this pain that I had been trying not to look at. And the funny thing is, is I'm a very, very introspective person. So it's not like I hadn't worked through anything. I, it's not like that. Like this has been something that's been ongoing, you know, this inward gaze, like I've had that on and off, but it's hard when there are things distorting your perception, drugs, alcohol, you know, maladaptive behaviors, whatever else you are addicted to. It, it's hard to sort through what can be complex emotions that have been turned away from from a long time if you are fuzzied by addictions. And so, yeah, really allowing that pain to come up. And, and at first, it was agonizing. At times it still is agonizing, but you come to a point where you've processed through a large chunk of that mass and it doesn't sit as heavy inside you anymore. And then that is when you reach this question of who am I without the pain or without that same intensity of pain or without that same density of pain? Like who am I now that I've processed up and out and through a lot of this hurt that I've been carrying in my flesh vessel for however long you've been carrying it. Um, and not only that, if you are someone like me, and I think to some degree, we as humans, we are motivated by pain and pleasure. We'd all love to get to that self-actualized place where we could say that we are not, you know, propelled forward through this life without seeking pleasure or without trying to avoid pain or what have you. And this is a whole other situation, but you know, maybe that enlightened state is the welcoming and the holding of the space for those very human 
things, you know, the drive to get away from pain and to distract yourself sometimes. And maybe you can sit back and be aware of that. Or, you know, when you catch yourself seeking pleasure and you maybe eat a little too much chocolate that one day and you're completely cognizant of that and you're awake to it. And maybe that's, you know, maybe the goal isn't to shut these drives off completely. But yeah, this is kind of the question that I'm facing. And this, you know, maybe you're just on a healing journey. Maybe you're not an addict. Maybe you're not an alcoholic. Um, but for me, where I'm at in my recovery and my healing journey, which I kind of phrase as, as this homecoming, as this settling back into what I am, I've had to go through this dethaw phase. And on the other side of that is this question of what is going to be my novel motivator if I am not going to be pressed ahead through this life by, you know, these dark forces that have been all encompassing for most of my life. I have been moved by pain for most of my life. Even when I pursue something, you know, some big project, if I'm not kind of feeling the pain through that, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I, I still have to check myself with regard to that because you just, you get so used to that that pain being that source of motion, of that source of forward motion. If you were here looking for a solid answer to who am I without the pain, I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to give you one because this is something I'm still in the process of figuring out. But as my intramural walls continue to melt and that pain continues to expel from my being. I'm becoming more and more content with doing less to do more. You know, as that intensity, that, that just that fire within, which is still there flickering, like there is still a source that moves me. It's just not weighed down by this dense cloud of hurt that that I carried for a long time. Because like I said, using addictions, whatever to look away. So really, I just wanted to make this because I think a lot of people can relate to this if you are endeavoring on any sort of healing journey, whether you're embarking on your sobriety journey, you're in recovery, or you are just simply looking to heal, heal trauma. I think there does come a certain point where you need a new motivator and it's far less self berating. It's just lighter. It's peculiar because you, you get used to the heaviness. And though it's easy, sometimes I do get very frustrated with myself. And I almost, I almost long to have that, that pain back in my body to be able to just push at that intensity that I used to it just, it was almost just everything I did was with this level of aggression and not like hostile aggression, but just from everything I'd been through and all that pain, it just, everything had this heaviness and this force and this just push mentality. And now I'm more in this space where it's, I don't have that anymore because the pain, like I said, it's made its way out of me. And now I'm just in this, okay, I just wanna press forward with intention. I wanna be present. I wanna be calm. I wanna move peacefully through my day, as peacefully as possible. I want my nervous system to stay as regulated. And sometimes I still snap. I am human, I'm not perfect. Do I very rarely experience anger now? Yes, very rarely. As much as I would like to sit here and say that anger is something I'll never experience again, given the right set of circumstances, if my boundaries get a little too flimsy and I'm around the wrong people who know how to press my buttons, press me to my limits, I could still very well, that fire could spread through me real quick again. But I like to keep the flame tranquil. I don't want this giant inferno blazing within me anymore. You move far more manically 
with a forest fire as opposed to a candle. And when you're moving manically, you miss a lot of life. You're living out of pain. I don't want to live out of pain anymore. And I don't know what the contrary is to that exactly. That is what I'm sitting here talking through, trying to allow itself to figure out through me because I don't know, I don't have all the answers. I just like to sit with these things when they come up. And that is what has been coming up, you know, what is going to be my novel motivator going forward? Is it peace? Is it, I don't particularly know. All that I really know is as I move through my day, I want to do the next right thing that feels good. And I want to be in tune with my body. I don't want my mind, like what I used to do when I was living from that core source of pain, it was just override my body at all costs, which broke down my physiological structure to a somewhat terrifying state. Like, I was very, very beaten down. Like to the point where, to the point where moving, just moving, just the, the, the simplest taken for granted actions were a struggle. And I don't want to be like that. I want to sustain my energy healthily. If you move through your whole life driven by that source of pain and you just allow that mass of affliction that's been building to just keep snowballing around inside, packing, becoming more dense, more heavy, you're gonna exhaust yourself carrying that around and it's gonna probably manifest itself as some sort of very unfavorable physical symptom. The, the beauty of the body is it wants to get your attention with these types of things and it got mine. I had to get to a pretty low place, a very low place to really see this to really become aware of the pain and to, to, to give it careful attention. So it's a very beautiful thing to have reached this point in my walk through this life where I can say that I feel a lightness, that I feel I've worked, that, that I can feel that I can sense that that inner turmoil has relocated. It's moved out of me. Hopefully it's transmuted. Hopefully it's been transmuted into something a little more beautiful, which I believe it does. Like, I don't believe I just dumped off a cloud of dark energy somewhere. Like hopefully it transformed into something nice um, outside myself. Maybe it's because I've talked about it enough that it's gotten out of me or I've written enough about it or whatever. I'm at this juncture where I just, I'm turning a corner. I'm living with this lightness and it's, it's so lovely. I'm just curious, like, who am I without this pain? Who am I without the same intensity of pain? What is going to be that source that moves me ahead? You know, of course, it's doing the right thing, doing God's will to some degree, using the gifts that have been bestowed to me as the unique organism that I am. And always for me, always, always is living as honestly as I can, as authentically as I can, and as transparently as feels right. Yeah, those are the things that I guess I'm moving forward with. I'd love to hear like, who are you without the pain? You know, if you've got to this point in your healing journey and you're moving through life with this lightness, what is it that sort of drives you? And I don't mean like drives you, like push, push. Like what presses you onward? I just feel like in this culture where it's just like pow, 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 pow. I want to know the softer motioning, the flow and not the force. Like this is just... This is where I'm at in recovery, in my sobriety, in my healing journey, settling back into myself. It just pushing, forcing, these things don't feel good. Pressing, flowing, like just moving with the wind. Like 
And that, that is not to say I am not disciplined, which is a whole other conversation. That is not to say, you know, that sometimes I'm doing things that I don't want to, but I'm doing them differently. I'm doing them with more presence and I'm doing them from a softer, softer, lighter place. That does procure a different experience. Who am I without the pain? Who are you without the pain? And what is your, what is your motivator? You know, once you've processed through a lot of that hurt, uh, I'd love to hear in the comments below what you think, like the video and stick around if you're enjoying this stuff that I, I don't know, do people really talk about this stuff? I feel like they don't. Um, and this is just what becomes relevant to me in my life. And I just like to get on here and speak about it because it helps me work through it too. And if I'm grappling with these particular issues, I imagine that my fellow beings are to some degree or another. Anyways, thank you for being here. Have a great rest of your day.